Praise the Lord, brothers and sisters. Bishop Michael Behringer here with you on today. I do bring you greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am so glad that you've tuned in for this uh, Tuesday night Bible study. May God bless you and keep you. I pray that this video finds you well and that you are walking in the joy of the Lord, which is your strength. I pray right now for peace that passes all understanding. I pray for you that the presence of God will be prevalent in your life, that he will bless you going out and coming in, that we will walk like queens and kings of the Lord. Amen. I pray for the presence of Jesus on this teaching, and we welcome the Holy Spirit to take part with us as we learn the word of God. I plead the blood of Jesus over you, the sweet communion of the Holy Ghost with you. And may you be blessed and highly favored in Jesus' name. Amen. Tonight, we're staying with the book of Jeremiah. We're going to switch over to chapter number 33. Um, in all actuality, I'm interested in a couple of verses, but I want to give you, uh, let you look at the rest of it. And it is a blessing. Um, if you're taking note. He's going to talk about what he will do, what he shall do. If you count the I wills, you will count where the word will appears. You will count seven and shall, you will count seven. Completion, seven is the number for completion or perfection. And I want you to watch how this unfolds. And we're still on our subject, if it's odd as God, that is the series that we're talking about. And I want you to understand that God is a powerful God, but he does work in odd ways. Isaiah 55, starting at verse 6, certainly. He said, my ways and your ways are not alike. Uh, we are also asking you to keep in mind 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 27, I believe, and, uh, and what it has to say to us about how he took the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. But the fact of the matter is, God does work in odd ways, not odd to him. He is an eternal being. And he told Isaiah, my ways and your ways are not alike. And so, again, I want to put emphasis on we're talking about, you know, how God operates. And if it's odd, it's God. And tonight I want to bring you an odd promise that he made. <laughs> he had told them that they would go into captivity and... Uh, God is going to speak through Jeremiah again. It's in chapter number 33 of the book of Jeremiah. I'm going to be reading to you a little bit, and I'm going to make reference to the other scriptures, but you'll go back and look at them to give you something to do. Especially in the times that we're living in, God says a few things in here that I think is really, really important. And in verses 1 and 2, I I'm going to... Uh, read verses 1, 2, and 3 in your hearing. Those are the verses I'm most concerned about tonight. And I will be reading other verses, but it's, it's to show you the end results. Now listen to this. It says, moreover, this is in uh, Jeremiah chapter number 33 and verse 1. Now we had where what God had told them. Now I know the thoughts I think towards you. And then God says this in, Jer in, in Jeremiah chapter number 33. He says, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah the second time, while he was yet shut up in the court of the prison, saying, uh, Thus saith the Lord, the maker uh, thereof, uh, the Lord that formed it to establish it, the Lord is his name. Come unto me. And I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Um, and then when you go on and you begin to read in verse number four, it says, For thus saith the Lord, uh, the God of Israel, concerning the house, houses of this city and concerning the houses of the kings of Judah, which are thrown down by the mounts and by the sword. He was talking about how they got into captivity. Uh, they come to fight with the Chaldeans. He's talking about the Israelis who was used to winning. Uh, but it is to fill them with the dead bodies uh, of men whom I have slain in my anger and my fury. And for all whose wickedness I have hid my face from this city. Behold. And then he goes on to talk about the things that he will do. 
And again, as you read it, and I'm going to come back to it, I want you to count the I wills. But he had told them um, that when they went to fight the Chaldeans, God made the Chaldeans angry. The more they fought them, the angrier the Chaldeans got, you know. And, and God caused them, uh, the enemy, to be angry so they would fight harder. And so they are now in captivity. And then it says this, Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah the second time. So uh, because of man's nature, God has to often speak to us over and over because we are uh, by nature uh, disobedient and we are also by nature distrustful. And so God had to speak to him over and over. And it says, moreover, in verse 1, the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah the second time while he was yet shut up in prison. I like that because God will meet us where we are. It doesn't matter where, he, where we are. When God get ready to talk to us, he can, he can meet us where we are. And God makes a promise. Now, again, this is an odd promise. He said, call unto me, I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. And so God goes on to talk about how the enemy had got angry and they had lost the battle to the enemy. And he says to them, call unto me. If you'll call to me, I'm going to show you something that you do not know. And God makes this odd promise. I want you to listen to this promise. And I want you to count the times I will appears. Verse number six, behold, I will bring it health and cure. Now, I want to stop right now. Because God had caused these things to happen because of their obedience. And then he says, behold, I will, not you will. You aren't going to come up with the cure for this. You are not going to come up with the health for this. I'm going to bring it about. Especially in the times we live in, we need a cure. So if we turn to God, he makes a promise that I will bring health and cure. Now watch what he says. Behold, I will bring it health and cure. Now that's one I will. And I will cure them too. And will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. That's three wills. I will cause the captivity of Judah and the captivity of Israel to return. Okay, that's, that's four. And I will build them as at the first, five. And I will cleanse them from all their iniquity, six. Whereby they have sinned against me. Now listen. And I will pardon all the iniquities whereby they have sinned and whereby they have transgressed against me. That's seven. Now watch the I shells. And it shall, one, be to me a name of joy, a praise and an honor before all the nations of the earth, and shall hear two shells, all the good that I do unto them. And they shall, three shells, fear and tremble for all the goodness and for all the prosperity that I produce unto them. Thus saith the Lord again, there shall be another shell heard in this holy place, which ye say shall be, that's another shell, even in the city of Judah and the streets of Jerusalem that are desolate without man and without inhabitants and without beasts, the voice of joy and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom, the voice of the bride, the voice of them that shall, six shells, say, Praise the Lord of hosts, for the Lord is good, for his mercy endure forever. And of them that shall, seven shells, uh, bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. And then he says in the end, here it is. Here's the promise. For I will cause, for I will cause to return the captivity of the land as at the first, saith the Lord. That is very interesting because God makes an odd promise. He makes a promise while they are still in captivity. He makes a promise when there's no daylight at the end of the tunnel. He comes to Jeremiah a second time. And sometimes the second time around is the best time around. And he tells Jeremiah to pray again a second time. Sometimes your second prayer is better than your first prayer after you've been through something that you didn't think you would ever go through. Because when you go through and you have been through, your prayer changes. And so does God's plan for your life. And God keeps talking about what he shall do. God keeps talking about what he will do.
And he's saying that, and that is odd because they're still in captivity. In other words, when God makes you a promise, you can take it to the banks of heaven. It will cash. It does not necessitate that he makes that promise right now, and it has to have already happened. God promises things that haven't happened, and even your praise, when you praise him for what he's promising you for, you can't really praise him to the fullness of the promise because you don't even know what the promise is. He said, I'm going to bring some stuff about that you don't know nothing about. I'm getting ready to bless you in a way that you don't even expect to be blessed. I'm getting ready to do something in your life that you don't even know how to ask me for. They have went into captivity. They're coming up on the 70s years and God is telling them what he's getting ready to do for them. I'm going to do it in a way and in a manner that is going to blow your mind. He is not asking them to do anything in, re in return. He knows what our hearts are. He has read their thoughts. He has been there through their long nights. Some of them have died there and he's taken note of it. But now he's talking about what he is about to do. And he talks about how he's going to bring a cure. He's going to heal them. As we go through this thing that we're going through, if we will turn our face to God, God will do a new thing on this earth. He'll bring about something that we don't even know what to ask for. I know a lot of people saying, Lord, will you stop it? Lord, will you heal it? Lord, will you do this or will you do that? But when his perfect will is done, the end of this thing is going to be better than the beginning of it. In other words, God said, by the time they make it back to my house, they're going to be glad to raise their hands and they're going to praise me with a praise they've never praised me with before because all the long nights, all the suffering they went through, they have gotten to know who I am. You can't miss church until you can't go there because you can't miss what you can't measure. The old people used to say, you don't miss your water till the well run dry. And God has came to Jeremiah who shut up in a prison. And he said, now this is what I want you to do. I want you to pray one more time. You are one prayer away from a breakthrough. I'm about to bless you one more time. This next blessing that you get after this long hiatus, the next blessing that you get is going to be something unlike you've ever known because the best is still yet in the future because that's God's MO. He does odd things. After they had been through their 70 years of mourning, after they had been through their 70 years of captivity, God is about to give them something greater later than they had in the beginning. And I came to let you know tonight that there is a breakthrough coming. I came to let you know tonight that you have been positioned for a miracle in your life. I came to let you know tonight that everything is going to be all right. He told Jeremiah, he said, I want you to take them another word. Jeremiah is shut up in prison. I want you to take them another word. They're still yet in captivity. I want you to take them another word that they are about to sing and dance and have joy and have peace that passes all understanding. He speaks that what is odd, not when he brings them out, but he speaks that before he brings them out. Because with God, he will tell you things before it even gets there. He will show you things that are yet unseen seen and he is going to take his time with the nation of Israel and he's going to tell them how he feels. Now here it is. He didn't ask them to do anything. He said, I shall. He didn't tell them what they had to do. He told them what he was going to do. And all they had to do was believe that what he said is the truth. That's all they had to do. Their blessing is on the way because when he says, I shall, this is God saying it. And that's odd, but that's God because God knew what plan he had for them. I just told you, he said, I know the thoughts I think towards you. All this time, the thoughts that God was thinking toward them was still in motion. Even though they were on the outside somewhere looking in, God's thoughts toward them were still in motion. So what are we supposed to do? How are we supposed to do it? Here's what we do. We start thanking God and praising him for the goodness that's coming. 
That's odd, but that's God. He has made an odd promise, so an odd promise deserves an odd praise. We're waiting for something to happen before we say thank you, Lord. But I want to thank him in advance for what he's about to do because I can look back over the past and see what he's done already. He blessed me at times when I wasn't fit to be blessed and didn't ask me nothing about it. He just blessed me in spite of myself. So God comes to Jeremiah and he says, you tell them this is what I will do. I know they are about to turn to me. They don't even know they're going to turn to me yet. Listen, God knows you're his before you know you're his. God is working on your behalf before you even know who God is. God is working out things that you don't even yet know is a problem. And he tells him, he said, you tell them this is what I will do. Seven wills come out in that chapter. God has the perfect blessing waiting on them. Seven shells come out in that chapter. And God is saying, not not only will I, but I shall. Now, what is the difference in I will and I shall? I will is what he's thinking about you. I shall is what that thought is about to do. So they are about to be blessed. It is still a future blessing, but it is good to know that in the mind of God, he has conceived some stuff that the enemy can't take from you. It is good to know in the mind of God that there's coming a time when he's going to release it. You think your stimulus was something. Wait until God finishes with this. I believe that there is something coming. I believe there's a fresh anointing. I believe there's a revival that's going to shake this nation yet on the way. God said, I will come and see about you. I will come and cure you. I will come and heal you. I will come and deliver you. And I shall make a place for you that you can raise your hands and praise my name. I'm going to do it. And there's nothing that anybody can do to stop it. So all you have to do with an odd promise is accepted in an odd way. Even though I'm still right here where I was when the promise was made, it's just the fact that the promise was made that I know I'm coming out. I know I'm going to be healed. I know I'm going to be delivered. In that, you see the very essence of what faith is. Faith is because God said it, it's already done. It hasn't come into fruition yet. It, it has not manifested itself in my life yet. But if God said, I shall, and then he turned around and said, I will, the God that I know, if he said, I shall, between I shall and I will, I should have went up in an eruption. I should have had a praise. When God said, I shall, I should be blessing him because he is God. I should be blessing him for what he's about to do in my life. You need to look at somebody and say something magnificent, something powerful, something beyond your imagination is about to take place in my life. I'm getting ready to move to a new realm. I'm getting ready to move to a new level because God said I shall. And my faith partners with God between I shall and I will. And then not only did God tell him I shall, he said I will. He is saying you don't have to do this. I'm going to do it. You're not the one who came up with it. I conceived it in my mind. You've been in captivity long enough. You've been through enough stuff now. So I shall create in you a blessing that you don't even know is there yet. You're about to break out in singing. You're about to break out in laughter. You're about to to break out and dancing while tears are still running down your face. You're about to move on up while you're still living on the lower side of town. You're about to be healed while you're still sick in your body. Nothing in your body, nothing in your finances, nothing in your house is telling you where you're about to go. But God said, I shall do it. And then he turned around and said, I will perform this thing that I said I shall do. Now in between I shall and I will is the place where most people lose the blessing because they start speaking against what they know that God said he shall do. I shall never leave you comfortless. The Holy Ghost is coming. I shall never leave you sick like that. You know your healing is coming. If you can get God to speak a word in the future, you have to maintain and get to the future where you can receive it. By him speaking that word gives me the power to get through anything that I'm going through 
through because I'm headed to a word that is yet in the future. I'm headed to a place that God has designated that his word would meet me. He doesn't give his word and leave you. He gives his word and stay with you. He says, Jeremiah, I want you to pray one more time. I'm standing right here, but I still want you to pray because in order for them to see what I'm talking about, they're going to have to have a mental and emotional and a spiritual and a physical breakthrough because when you get that breakthrough and you know that God said he shall do it, it's as good as already done. The check is already in the mail. In the same way you were not looking for the mailman with stimulus, you need to be looking for God with deliverance. The same way that you look for somebody to pick you up and to bring you something, you need to be looking for God to pick you up and make you something. And so God said this, he said, I will, and then he says, I shall. Then he says, you're going to break out in dancing. You're going to break out in singing. You're going to break out in praise because I'm getting ready to do something in your life that's going to blow your mind. And because God said that he would do it, then that's time to celebrate right there. That, as I told you, is where your faith kicks in because faith says, I don't have to see it to believe it. Faith says, if God said he's going to do it, he's going to do it. Faith says that it's already done, it just ain't been seen yet. And so God is telling them, look, I'm going to do this. It was a time when I made your enemies so mad at you that they wouldn't quit coming, bodies heaped up in the street. It was a time that I was so disenfranchised with you that I allowed things happen to, to just get your attention. I allowed them to happen. I allowed them to take you into captivity. I allowed them to have mastery over you. Has the long days of your captivity proven to you that I am God? I mean, you still had walls when they came, but I let them take you. You were still having church, but I let them take you. You were still raising your hands and talking to me crazy, but I let them take you. So now are you ready to do this for real? Are you ready to allow me to bless you beyond measure? Because you got to understand something for every year that they spent in captivity, God blessed them with 10 times what they would have had. So all of a sudden God says, I will, I shall. And then he walks into the future. He goes past where you are and go to where you're headed and he sees you dancing with joy and with peace and with happiness and he comes back and he tells Jeremiah he said pray one more time. Write one more time because I want them to know what's about to happen in their life and when it happens they aren't going to believe just how good I have been to them because I will perform it. I shall do it and you are going to have it. You're going to be blessed and highly favor. It is almost, your begging days are almost over. Your long nights are almost over. Your being captive to something is almost over. Your fears are almost over because I shall show up and I will do what I said I would do because you are still mine. Even though you made me mad, even though I put you in captivity, you never cease to be mine. Even though I allowed certain things to happen to you, even though it didn't turn out the way you wanted it to turn out, I'm still right here working on your behalf and I'm telling you I shall show up. I shall bring healing. I shall bring cures. I shall bring peace. I shall bring love. I shall bring joy. I shall bring all of these things and we don't even celebrate the fact that God has made us these promises. What an odd promise and an odd place to make it. You made an odd promise when we had just about gave up. You made an odd promise when we were in the last part of captivity. You made an odd promise when yet your promise hadn't even come true yet. But because you made the promise, because you said it, remember Isaiah 55, my word will not return unto me void. Because he said in our previous lesson, I've spoke a good word over you. That good word means that God is going to keep you until he gets you to the place of your blessing. Oh no, it doesn't happen overnight. Oh no, it won't happen tomorrow. But if God said, I shall, then you got to know he will. If God said, I shall, you got to know it's coming. If God said, I shall, you got to start speaking it like it's yours. If God said, I shall, you need to clean out a couple shelves and you need to clean out a closet because your blessing is going to be poured out and you don't even have room enough to receive it. If God said, I shall, it doesn't matter who says that he can't. If God said, I shall, it doesn't matter where you've been. If God said, 
said I shall, he's the God of second chances. If God said I shall, then he's the God who can do it. And so here Jeremiah is set up in a prison and Jeremiah loses sight of everything. And all of a sudden, here comes God after he would have sent us here. Here comes God after we've been here. Here comes God after I've given up, after it looked like all hope was lost. I think that's odd about God. He loves to take his time to make us smile. I think that's odd about God that people have gave up on you, but God took you up through. I think it's odd about God the way that he will show up when all hope looked like it's lost, the way he will show up when we've given up on everything but ourselves, the way that he'll show up and do the incredible, the impossible, above all that we can ever ask, think, or say. I think that's odd about God that he showed up and he told Jeremiah, he said, I need you to pray one more time. I need them to understand that the reason why the Chaldeans fought so hard is I allowed them to build up an anger against the nation of Israel that could not be refudiated. They could not change it. They could not change my plan. And now that you went into captivity and you're starting to cry out to me, I'm getting ready to do a new thing. I'm getting ready to bring you out in ways that you didn't even know you were in. I'm getting ready to touch you in ways that you've never been touched before. I'm getting ready to heal you and deliver you and bring you out of the captive mess that's all around you. Because God said, I shall and I will. And I thank God for that. I thank God for that passage of scripture because it lets me know that even though God let the, let the enemy have mastery over them, he also came back himself and told them what he shall do. He also came back himself and told them what he will do. He also came back himself and left an odd promise while they were still in captivity that everything's going to be all right. And no matter where you are today, what you're going through tonight, everything's going to be all right. Because God has made us certain promises and he can't give this thing preeminence over us. In his own set time, he will show up and show out. God told the prophet, you go tell him I shall. Now here's what's interesting. They're going to listen to him because everything he told them in the past has came true. The prophets that said, you won't be here that long. Where are they now? Nowhere to be seen. The prophets that said, God don't do that. Where are they at now? Don't nobody know. But the one prophet who spoke up and told us was Jeremiah. He said that God said, I shall. He said that God said, I will. Now, if you reverse the order, God started talking about what he would do. And when you come to the end, he talked about how, he didn't tell you how, he just told you it was done. And when God speaks a word and he says that it's done, when God comes forward, when he came to the graveyard, all he said was, uh, 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 Lazarus, come forth. That's what he said. In the storm, he only said three words, peace be still. Because when God speaks a word on your behalf, there is nothing in this universe that can stop it. And God came to them and he said, I shall. God came to them and he said, I will. He said, get your sons and daughters ready. They're getting ready to get married. They're getting ready to build a house. They are getting ready to be blessed by the name of the Lord. And when God says that I shall, there is nothing in this world that can stop that process. And when God says, I shall, I will, it means that your time is getting close. It means that your season is right up on us. And I got a feeling that when we come out of this, it is a season for the church. I got a feeling that when we come out of this, that people will be different than they were going in. I have a feeling down deep in my soul that a blessing is already on the way because God said, I will. And I know when God says, I will and I shall, he's doubling down on the fact that we are blessed and highly favored. He's doubling down on the fact that no weapon formed against you now shall prosper. He's doubling down on you to the fact that all things really do work together for the good to them that love God who are to call according to his purpose. And all of a sudden, here comes God with our will and our shell. He says, Jeremiah, pray one more time. Jeremiah, go on back and tell my people just one more time that I'm here. Go on and let them know that I've heard a sound down on my eternal soul that I'm about to do something great in the land for my people. Thank you, Jesus, that you're still working out miracles today. Thank you, Jesus, because I found a cure. I found a cure for myself. I found a cure for my illnesses. I found a cure for my slowfulness. I 
found the cure in Jesus because he said, I will and I shall. I will save you. I shall keep you. I will bring you out and I shall keep you out. I will give you money to pay your bills and I shall make you the head and not the tail. So God has told them what he will and what he shall do. Now they got to accept that by faith. I believe they could have left out on that very day, but their faith wasn't strong enough. And as time went on, their faith increased and God said, I will and I shall. Well, how did their faith increase? It was God's word that he spoke in their life that kept them from dying in Babylon. It was God's word that he spoke in their life that's going to bring them out of captivity and move it on the heart of the king to let them go. It is God's word that says, I shall, that says, I will. And we as the church, we have got to know what our God is capable of doing. We've got to turn our face toward the wall and say, have your way, O Lord. If I die, let me die in the army of the Lord. We have got to turn our face to the wall and know that he is God and besides him, there is none other. We have got to turn our face to the wall and know that we can be still and see the salvation of the Lord because he said, I will and I shall. He made no bones about it. You make no mistakes about it. If God says, that he's going to do a thing, you can count it as already done because can't nobody do us like our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He tells Jeremiah in the beginning, don't listen to them candy prophets because they are going into captivity, but I'm going to come and visit them one day. And this is the day that he came to visit. And he said, I know the thoughts I think towards you. Then he goes on to talk about what he will and what he shall do. Oh, it makes me just want to close my eyes and praise the name of the Lord because my God, he is a strong tower. The righteous run into him and they are safe. Oh, it makes me want to close my eyes and just be still and know that he is God. It makes me want to close my eyes and meditate on him because when you meditate on the one who said, I will, I shall, stuff starts manifesting in your life that you didn't even think you would get. Thank God for the manifestation of the Holy Spirit in my soul because when God says, I will, and God says, I shall, I can count that as already done. That, my friends, is why God is odd because he's speaking those things that hasn't happened yet as though we've already got them. That's why, my friends, that God is odd because he comes into them while they're yet in captivity and he is making a way and making a way and making a way and making a way and we don't even realize that we can close our eyes and meditate on him and that he will make a way out of no way. We don't even realize what thoughts God have toward us. We could not possibly know what tomorrow holds, but I do know one thing. He's holding tomorrow. So today I want to encourage you to let God have his way. Today I want to encourage you not to get so overwrought, not to get so overtaken. Yes, by all means practice social distancing. Yes, by all means keep that six foot distance so that God can turn this thing around. But he also said that my people, which are called by my name will humble themselves, pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and I'm going to heal your land. There is a healing coming to the land. There is a healing coming to individual homes. There's a healing coming to relationships. There's a healing coming for your children because God knows the way we take. He knows who we are. He knows what we do. And he said, I want you to pray one more time and I want you to get a sense of direction and I want you to tell them people that I'm with them. And if I'm with you, no, nobody can change that. If God be for us, who can be against us? So he said, I shall. He said, I will. And he talked about what he would do. And then he talked about the future where they're going to dance and have a great time in the Lord because he has already made a way of escape. And that's what I like that scripture. It says, there has no temptation taken you, but it's such as common to man. But God is faithful who will with the temptation also make a way of escape that you are able to bear it. 
and we can bear this. We can get through this because there's a healing on the other side. We can make it out of this by just getting down on our knees and crying out to God because there is a God on the other side. We can get out of this if we will allow ourselves to be what God called us to be. I just keep closing my eyes. I keep envisioning just how good God has been. I keep envisioning that God said, I will, and then God said, I shall. That is a double promise. That is a peace that passes all understanding. And so tonight I wanted to come to you and tell you don't forget what happened when God brought them out of captivity. Don't forget how God said, I will and I shall. Don't forget how he told them to keep on marrying, that he wanted to hear the laughter of the bridegroom and the bride. Don't forget all of that because God said, if I will, I shall. If it's in my heart to do it, it's already done. It just ain't manifested itself to you yet. I will and I shall because the God we serve, he has it in his power to do something that can't nobody else do. And he says to Jeremiah, I will. I will what? I will bless them and I shall. I shall what? I shall make a way out of no way like I've always been doing through this pandemic. Yes, we're in a pandemic, but God said, I will and I shall. And when I read where he said he would bring a cure throughout the land. It warmed my heart because if we need anything today, it is a cure. But God said, I will and I shall. And that's just enough for me. Praise the Lord, saints. That was a short lesson compared to the ones that I've been doing. But I want you to know that you are in the mind of God. That's odd. But let God be in your mind too. That's odd. So bless the name of the Lord. Keep your head lifted up and your mouth filled with praise. And may the sun of the living God rise and shine on you. May everything that God said you were come and find you right now. I love you in the Lord. There's nothing you can do about that. And remember, God has odd ways of doing things because he said, I will and I shall. God bless you. Have a good day.